we began a few weeks ago on uh, the lessons of the spirit and we have gone so far I want to specifically now uh, kind of try finish uh, to deal with the false prophets because we began dealing with uh, hearing God and so we spoke about different ways of hearing God but we cannot finish hearing God if you do not dissect concerning false prophets because we are living in a time when there is a lot of false prophets. We are living in a time where people do not even know that the people they relate with or see as prophets or see as servants of God or as prayer partners they are actually false prophets. Not every Everybody, but I'm doing doing um, you know the, the the whole topic of uh, false prophets. I'm I'm doing a kind of dissecting to really show you the characteristics so that we are able to understand. Um, for the work that the Lord is doing in our nation, we have to be very clear. We have to be very clear on, on who is with God and who is not with God. In a personal level, you have to be clear on what you're following, who you are. Because remember I said last time that you can, when you stay under a false prophet, that is what you become. Because there is no way you can be under a false prophet and you end up becoming true because you know you shall bear your fruit in according to your kind and so most of us end up being in a place where we are under false prophets and we exhibit qualities or characteristics of being false prophets and I began last time by saying one of the reasons why you can end up being a false prophet even though you want to serve God it is because you have not dealt with your background of witchcraft if you've come from a foundation or background where there is idol worship Basically, if you just come into salvation and you don't deal with that and you know how to deal with that in warfare, you are likely to end up in a place where you are a false prophet without knowledge. So we say last time, we are not just teaching to point fingers on people. We are editing ourselves. And that is where we began. You could tell there is a lot of work to be done in you personally, not just to whoever you're thinking about. Those that are out there are not hearing this message. It is you that is hearing this message. So it is you to edit yourself and ask the Spirit of God to help you. Uh, so I want to just run um, a few points and then we go to there to the real place where I stopped uh, last time and I begin for today. I began by basically just defining who are categorized among the false prophets and I talked about the diviners, I talked about the people, you know, like the New Age religion, the Eastern religion, that talk about the dark eye, the chakras and the kundalini. I spoke about the lying spirit, the soothsayers, the familiar spirits, people who are, you know, um, witches, palm readers, astrologers, all that. Now, I want you to understand, when I mention those names, in my mentioning sounds evil. All right, so you you can you can hear me and know those are not people that you're related with. But remember, when they appear on an altar of a church, when they appear on an altar representing God, they will not come saying, "I am a diviner, I have a familiar spirit, I'm a witch, or I have a lying spirit, or I'm a soothsayer." They don't come saying that. So when I say it that way, you may not find yourself there or find anybody that you under or you receive from there. So you have to be very careful not just to hear me talking about the soothsayers and the diviners and the witches and the palm readers and the astrologers you will not see them calling themselves those names so but really that is who they are but then we are in the kingdom of God and these people have entered into our kingdom and they are actually part of the kingdom and so you will you will think is a servant of God you will even yourself you can be operating as a diviner and you have no idea what you are doing is divination is not prophecy all right it's very the difference between prophecy and divination is a thin line a very very thin line because a diviner uses a, a, a demonic spirit to access knowledge and it's the same thing the prophet does using the spirit of God to access knowledge that knowledge that they bring to you you understand so the, the thin line is the spirit behind so if you do not have discernment you'll never know whether what is speaking to you is divination or is actually prophetic 
all right so you you have to really hear with the ear of the spirit so that you are able to begin to design so that your discernment also is uh, very very sharpened now the following are the characteristics i spoke about last time so that you're able to begin somewhere so I already uh, spoke about the fact that you were born in a family where there is a background of witchcraft. It is a possibility. If you don't deal with it, you're going to become a false prophet. Number two, when you're dealing with a false prophet, they do not preach end time messages. If you want to identify a false prophet, they do not preach end time messages. They talk about encouragement. They talk about hope. Now remember it is godly to speak about hope. It is good to speak about encouragement. We encourage people. We give people hope. But now these people specifically they would dwell there so even when things need to be dealt with they still gonna come with a message that will make you shout the loudest hallelujah scream and lift up your chairs why because they do not have the message of christ in them of end time they they have got no ability to prepare your spirit to meet your maker so that is one of the characteristics i will not dwell there because i really explained that and then um, you are going to notice that when you have the, uh, the false prophetic spirit, you are quick to exalt your grace. That is why you keep on hearing about the grace that I carry. And I said men carry grace. So truly men do carry grace. But then when you're dealing with the false prophet, it is more about the grace of the man, not the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you understanding? Yeah. So when you go into a place, or even if it is you, and something happens, and you want people to stop and realize how grace you are, that is why this thing happened. You know people like that? You know? Like you, uh, like, um, like my sister there. She, she came here for the Kesha first time, and the following uh, week she came with a testimony, she got a job, right? I've never even given you a chance to give a testimony. Now, now, when you are in a place where there is false prophecy, the person will capitalize on a testimony like that. Not because God has done it. Because you must know there is grace here. Are you getting the whole motive? So they would capitalize on a specific testimony. I mean, look here. You don't know the sacrifices of my sister. You don't know where she came from before she came here, right? So the fact that she came and got the job the following Friday, I can assure you it may not necessarily be because she was here. You must have that. That is something our generation don't want to understand. We want to own what God is doing. Whether the miracle happened because she came or not, it is none of my business. I know God did it. So when you're dealing with the false prophet, they will capitalize on the things that God is doing in your life to bring them glory and to give them relevance. I will not continue from there because I'm trying to run through it. All right, so the next thing is uh, these people who have got the false prophetic spirit, they have strange experiences. Like before they give a prophecy, they will have very strange experiences. Like I said, if you have seen like the Wakorino before they can prophesy, they will swing around or, you know, just do some, some, something. Yeah, do something before the Lord can speak the Lord. Okay. So you will know. But a uh, 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 prophet of God, they will not even shake. All right? A prophet of God may not need to speak in tongues for 20 minutes and say, that says the Lord, that says the Lord. All right? The only time that might happen, it is when the tongues they were talking needs to be interpreted. And there will not be tongue talking if the Holy Ghost knows there is no interpreter. Because the spirit of God is not a spirit of confusion. 
So if somebody has a gift of speaking in tongues that needs to be interpreted, it shall not happen in an area where there is no interpreter. So that kind of a confusion, you hear a whole service, people are quiet and there is somebody shouting that side and speaking, speaking, and you are now all like, okay, I think the Lord is saying something here. And you're all waiting to know what the Lord is saying. And after 10 minutes of listening to tongues, then you see, yeah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You're like, so now, where are we all listening to this thing? You know. So some of these things are just taken, you know, uh, okay, it is possible that in such an environment there could be an interpreter who has not been raised, it is very possible. But then the leader in the place, if you realize the Holy Ghost is kind of trying to signal to you that he's raising people to speak in tongues, there should be interpretation in the place like that. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, things of the spirit don't lack balance. So. So um, sometimes it is that demonic spirit of a false prophet. They, they do that, that spirit, because it likes showing off. It likes taking time. It likes taking control of a service. Right? Um, that is why when we are dealing with some things like that, the worship team or the leader must always be ready. If you're here worshiping and worshiping and worshiping, then all of a sudden we hear, Hallelujah, sheesh, sheesh. Start a song immediately. Even if you start in the flesh, don't worry, we will finish in the spirit. There is just a way those, you will know it, right? You will just know it. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen those dramas in so many places. You just know it. So that, that is something leaders must always be. I'm sure now if that happens here, all of you will begin laughing. <laughs> because you've been taught. But don't worry, when you're taught, if somebody comes, you basically all know this must be a stranger. <laughs> you know, when the Spirit of God begins to talk to you, uh, you, you actually are very, very cautious, very, very disciplined because he's a spirit of wisdom. All right? Always remember that. He's a spirit of wisdom. Right. So the other thing that uh, I highlighted last time is that people also who hear strange voices, if you, your ears can literally hear strange voices, but you cannot maybe interpret what is going on, that is a sign that there is a false prophetic spirit that is capturing you. So you need to tune your frequencies to begin to hear the Holy Spirit. It is actually dangerous when your receptacles open to the wrong frequency. Your receptacles is actually your ears, anything that God can use to hear him, it is a receptacle. So like your ears, like your eyes, like your smell, like your taste, you know, like your body, all these are receptacles. So when your receptacles open, for example, now the hearing, but you're hearing strange voices, it means that they are activated, but activated to hear the wrong frequency. So all you need is like go through cleansing. Cleansing, I mean, you know, just go through uh, prayers of cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ, whatever could be the reason why you're tapping in the wrong frequency, as the Holy Ghost to help you, as the Lord Jesus Christ to help us, the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, all those kind of prayer. If you do that, or even take a day or two of fasting, you should find that now that kind of voices are gone and you're going to begin hearing correctly. So, um, so that's the thing about hearing different types of voices. The other thing I said is that these people use elements and they use elements to replace the word of God, to replace the blood of Jesus, to replace, you know, the, 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 you know everything we've been given. They use elements. And remember, it is not wrong to use elements. We know scripturally there are places in the Bible you find that people that God used, used elements. All right? We find Elisha. He goes to Jericho and he's told that the water there is bitter and there is barrenness in the land. And he asked the men of the city, bring me a bowl of salt. Bring me a new bowl of salt. So he takes the salt, put it in the well and the well is healed and the land is healed so you can use elements you understand so now but now when a false prophet is using elements what they do they exalt the element beyond the one behind the element because it is not about the sword it is not about the anointing oil it is not about the water 
when we use water as the blood of Jesus Christ, it is not about the handkerchiefs. It is about Jesus Christ. Are you understanding? And so that is the whole difference. If you find anybody using elements, and at the end of the day, it is about the sticker that you must put in your car. Because if you don't put that sticker in your car, things are going to go bad. You can't tell them, somebody knocked me in the week. And the first thing, they want to find out, do you have my sticker? So just because now your car was, somebody knocked your car. And the next question is, you see, you don't have, if you had my sticker, you know, brother so-and-so, they have, they have this thing in their bedroom. Even their marriage got healed. When the thing gets to that direction, then you know you're dealing with false prophecy. Because now it is about the sticker. It is about, you know, the salt. It is about the oil. All right? Yeah. So um, it goes just beyond where it should. Because at the end of the day, we should be able to operate even without this element. You understand? So if you find yourself in a position where you don't have that salt, do the salt covenant, you don't have maybe the oil, you should still be very able to use the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and get results. Are you getting it? Yes, but now when we bring these elements and they take the place of Christ, the place of the blood, the place of the word, and don't forget, they do not use elements without the word. They use elements very worded. So if you listen to it, I tell you, you will put the name of Jesus Christ aside and decide I'm going to use the element. Because the way they're going to bring about the issue, you are sure now, this thing is more powerful, the blood. That is why the church of now have got no understanding of the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Because you've been given other things and the power in those things, not in the blood. Are you understanding? And so that is, and, and with this now, we are having a, a group of believers who are born again, but they are not walking in sonship. Because when you are a son, you understand your inheritance. When you are a son, you understand you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, a place of authority. When you know you have authority, there is a way you walk because you know you have Jesus with you. Are you getting it? So whether you have oil, you have salt, you have water, it, it's really not a big deal. You with Christ are more than conqueror. You understand? So that is how false prophecy manifests. And then the other thing I mentioned is that they speak more of angels and the kind of manifestations beyond how they talk about the Holy Spirit. Remember, we are the church of the New Testament, we are the latter church. And the one you've been given is the Holy Spirit. So when you find people, or if it is you, and all you can talk about is the angelic, not that it is wrong. Remember with false prophecy, it is not about the thing being wrong. No, all these things are there in the light. But now, if all you can talk about is the angels, if all you can talk about is the the, the the kind of uh, encounters you are getting and in your encounters the spirit of God is not featured that is a problem because behind every manifestation behind every encounter it should be the Holy Spirit are you getting so if in your visions all you're seeing is people in white then you conclude that is an angel then you see others in wing and like your life is just full of encounters encounters and the holy ghost has no place just check yourself check yourself right that doesn't mean it's not possible for you to have angelic visitation okay it is very, very possible. But then your acquaintance with the Holy Spirit should be very, very, very well placed in your, uh, in your levels of ranking importance of deity. Are you getting it? Yes. For example, if you go maybe to bed like most of us who maybe see things at night or revelations at night, what are you expecting to see? You see, even if you look at your, uh, your motive, you can tell. Are you expecting to just hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit? Or just he can drop a scripture in you? Or are you just looking out for a figure to walk in your room? Can you understand? Do you see the two motives there? 
years. So those are the kind of things that open you to encounters that are ungodly because in you, you are actually not even expecting God. You are expecting something external. God is in you. Don't never forget that. He's in you. Jesus is in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. So the very first time that you ever hear audible voice, those of you that will hear or have heard, you note it is internal. You will think you're hearing it externally because you can even look and ask people, did you hear that? Only to realize you heard it like audibly, but the people could not hear. So it is internal. It is audibly but internal. So because God is in you. So when you go and you wait or you're here and we are all praying and we are saying, you know, the Holy Spirit is here. God is touching his people. Okay. You, you are expecting that something is going to pass on your eye. You are expecting to see a shadow, you know. So you are physically expecting. So when the enemy realizes your expectation, I can assure you he will give you a visitation. And because he knows you're most likely to believe in something in white, he will send you a spirit wearing white. And because he knows if he adds wings in the whatever he's going to send, he will make sure that spirit is winged. But if we ask you, so you got this winged, whatever came, angel, according to you. So what did he say? No, he just passed. Okay. Well, don't get me wrong. That, that doesn't mean you cannot have that experience. Are you getting it? So what are we looking for? Look at your heart. What are your expectations? Do you value the Holy Ghost so much that you just, you're not even expecting anything external. You're just expecting to hear him or just to be still. You know, you can love the Lord so much that you know he's with you. You are not expecting something strange. You just want to be in his presence. Are you getting? You just want to be in his presence. It's just so natural that he's together with you. Right. So, um. So those are some of the things I believe that I mentioned last time. Let me see if I'm exhausted so that we continue very quickly from there. Uh, I'm taking time to talk about the false prophets. The reason I'm taking time is because most of us, as I continue, you will understand why. Because most of us are bound in so many areas in false prophecy and we are not aware. Okay, the other thing I said is that when you... when <laughs> If you're under a false prophet and you decide to leave, they will never bless you. They will curse you. Or if you're under a false prophet and you hear there is something going on in town, they will never, especially if it's a meeting, a conference, a seminar, they will never allow you to attend. Lest you go find an anointed person and you change your mind. You see, can I tell you something? When you're dealing with people who are real prophets of God, because they have the spirit of the father, the spirit of the father is a spirit of fatherhood. So a father knows, even when my child goes, they will surely come because they know home. Right? They are, not, they, are, they are not worried because they know they have taken care of you well. They have protected you. They have cared for you. They have taught you. Even when you go to receive something, they are actually happy. Why? Because they know what you will learn. It will benefit them. For example, you, you all know we don't have a Sunday service, right? So all of you, you belong to somewhere. You go somewhere on a Sunday. So if you come here and you learn the things we teach you, is it that you become a curse or a blessing to where you worship? You become a blessing. Why? Because you're better equipped, you're better qualified to serve. Are you getting it? So when you are under a spirit of fatherhood, they will not be intimidated by the fact that you are receiving something good, whether it is online or physically. They, they will not have to chase you around now to come for a prayer meeting. Why? Because already you are drinking from the right well. The other thing they will understand is that they do not have everything. 
you are going to have to receive some things from different places. I remember like when I realized I had the prophetic anointing like years ago. The Lord connected me to this woman. This woman was a prophet. I I mean that one is those one that are born prophets. She would she would hear God like it's a switch. Then she would be like, "Joyce, you didn't hear that." I'm like, "Yeah, what?" What what? Those days I was just a dreamer. So she's hearing audible voice. And I cannot even relate to her. So I couldn't have gotten the training she gave me then from anywhere else. Even today. And I think I've said this so many times until all of you know. One of the reasons why I carefully follow Apostle Mike the Rockpo. It is because there are things I can only receive from him. And even you. There are things that you listen to a specific person because you can only get that thing that the Lord is growing in you from that person. Sometimes it could be even a book, not even a person. God can just make you read a specific book because what he want to teach you at that time, it is in that book and nobody living can give you that. You understand? So when you are under the spirit of fatherhood or a real prophet, they are actually happy when you are able to grow in your area of calling and, and be able to be mentored, whether by people or by books or by a television program that is goes. They, they are okay with that because they know they have brought you up well. They are not intimidated by anything or by anyone. So when you have to explain, okay, I'm not saying that you go to places and you don't say where you are, especially if you are a leader and you're not going to be in a specific service. It is good manners. It is good for you to tell your pastor, I will not be there on Sunday. I will not be there on Wednesday. Are you understanding me? Because now they're going to be waiting for you to lead prayer. And that is the time you are in, in another place. Are you getting? So I'm not training you to be a person who do not understand, you know, discipline. No, you must be disciplined. Okay? And I'm not sending you now that the fact that you listen to a specific preacher online and they come live at 5 p.m. when your church has a prayer meeting and then you're like, no, Pastor Joy said we must be groomed everywhere. So I'm not going to go to that prayer meeting. That's not demonic. So please get what I'm saying and be wise, all right? Anything live will not be deleted. You'll find it later. Go to your church prayer meeting and then come watch the thing, okay? Yeah, so I'm not training people to um, to begin <laughs> to begin another doctrine that is not godly at all. Right. So um, the other thing that I said concerning um, these people who are in false prophecy is that most of the time you are going to notice that because of the altars they serve, is especially if the altar is the altar of witchcraft or, or divination especially divination the altars of divination are powered by sexual intercourse so most of these people if they are in leadership you will notice that they are not straight in terms of morality in terms of morality you see there is a difference between when somebody is struggling with altars of polygamy all right when somebody is struggling with the altars of polygamy they might even when they were in the world, you, you, they, they, they are going to tell you they struggle. You know, they have maybe their wife and they are still struggling to see somebody. Are you seeing that part of it? But now, when you are a leader, all right, and in church, you are sexting somebody in the choir, you are sexting two ushers, you are sexting the Sunday school teachers, you are sexting somebody's wife, my friend, that is not altars of polygamy. You are serving a specific altar. And when you know you have an issue with altars of polygamy, deal with those things. There are things you should not get into leadership if you're dealing with them. Because they can, they can shame you in daylight. Are you getting me? And I'm saying this because I know most of you here are leaders. I can tell by how I look at you, I know most of you here are leaders. Now, there are things if you're in leadership, you should deal with them very well because Satan cannot shame you with, the, with those things. So, there is a, a very big difference because when you're dealing with altars of polygamy, you're going to be so broken. You know why? Because you're telling the Lord to help you. 
Okay? You are telling the Lord to help you. You are telling the Lord to deliver you. You don't know what to do. You are rebuking. You are binding. You are scattering. You are fasting because you have to come out of this thing. That's a different story. All right? But now this other person that is a false prophet who uses sexual intercourse to serve his altars of divination, they have got no remorse about it. They have no remorse about it. They will sleep with this one and sleep with this one and cover it with this one. And if you look like you want to uncover it, they will curse you. You know that kind of a scenario. So they have no remorse at all. Somebody who is remorseful. Remorseful means when you, when you have done something, then you feel so bad. Have you ever seen people who are possibly in drugs? And they have vowed to themselves they will never, never do drugs again. When they do drugs next time, because they might fall, they will really cry. They will cry. They will feel. Now, that is remorse. So the people who are false prophets, servicing altars of false prophecy, they will never be remorseful. In fact, they will keep on increasing the number of women that they have or men. Because they doesn't have to, to be just... Uh, men. I have seen false prophets who are women and what they do specifically especially all the young <laughs> especially all the young boys my friend box. when you are dealing with a false prophet who is a woman all the young boys okay they may not be all but a big chunk of all the young boys in a church or in a ministry I have seen it in different places and you keep on wondering so what happened to this young man because what happens when you be, when you become a puppet of those kind of people why they use sex to empower their altars is because sex by itself is a sacrifice so they take your virtue through sexual intercourse so you can be called but the minute you relate to them sexually you lose your virtue so you can see a church or a, or a ministry that had very powerful young people. You can tell their destiny is bright. They are very prayerful. They, are, they, they really love God. And five years later, these people have not gone anywhere. What is happening? If you investigate, if their virtue was not exchanged or stolen, it was through sexual intercourse. So that is how these altars operate. Are you good? The other thing I said is that most of these people, they do not empower prayer altars in terms of prayerfulness. And I'm going to elaborate that when I begin teaching today, so I won't say much. I also say they perform miracles, but the miracles they perform is that they will heal cancer, but they will leave a spirit of diabetes. So you are going to hear a lot of testimonies. What you're not realizing is that there is a lot of testimonies to gather people, but you are going to get healing from diabetes, but immolarity will come. So what they do, they just take one spirit and then they put another. So you are going to hear, hey, in this place people are getting healed. But if you look at the fruit of the congregation, you can tell there is error. All right. So um, let's just continue from there. Are you now feeling like uh, you've, been, you've been able to catch up? All right. I didn't want just to, um, you know, begin, begin from where I wanted to begin. And then at the end of the day, you're not even getting uh, what am I talking about and why are we looking at false prophets now? Actually, I began far where I talk about uh, how there are different types of prophets. There is a prophet who is born a prophet. That is the gift of the Father. There is a prophet who is a prophet by choosing, by having an office. That is a gift of the Son. There is a prophet who is a prophet by the Holy Spirit, which we have not looked at yet. I, in the Fikap, I decided, first of all, let me deal with false prophets because when you deal with false prophets, when I teach about the prophet who is by the Holy Spirit, you'll be able now to know and differentiate. Because these ones that are doing false prophecy, they are standing in a place where they want to look like they're being used of the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know what is false, you think it's the Holy Spirit. That is why I took time to teach on this one specifically. Right. Okay, I want to read a, script, a scripture uh, as I begin so that uh, we are able to go somewhere. Um, 1 Kings 22, 21. 1 Kings 22, 21 says... And there came forth the Spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? 
and he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do it. So this is a story of Ahab and Ahab was being set up by God to be killed. And so um, him and Jehoshaphat were going to battle. And so they wanted to inquire whether if they go to battle is going to be successful. But because the Lord wanted to set up Ahab, then this lying spirit took the assignment to enter into the mouth of all the prophets. Can you believe that? These are prophets who are prophesying to kings because Ahab is the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. Now, this is a lying spirit taking an assignment not to enter one prophet, but to enter all the prophets who are at a level of prophesying to the kings. And I may not go into the details because you may wonder how come a lying spirit came from the Lord and had permission from the Lord. I said last time, including Satan, he's a creation, all right? And every creation is under God. That is why if God wants to use a donkey to talk, he will use a donkey because all creation are under him. That is why even Satan can be used of God. That is why he was used to crucify Jesus for you to get your salvation. So when you understand that about creation, you'll be able to know that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So at the end of the day, all creation, including spirits, including anything in the world and the worlds that we cannot see, they are God. Okay? They belong to God. So, and I said that the Lord himself is holy. He's a holy God. So when he wants to execute, like, for example, a judgment like that one, because of his, the Lord doesn't have evil in him. All right? He does not have evil in him. So when you have done wickedness, meaning you have opened a door for judgment, the Lord who is holy doesn't have evil in him. The only way he executes judgment is that he removes his covering, all right? And evil comes in. Are you getting it? Am I being clear? So that is what happens. So when Ahab became a rebellious king, the Lord removed his covering, removed his protection. That is why a lying spirit will be allowed to come and bring lies so that Ahab can go to battle and be destroyed. I hope I've tried to explain in a very simple way so that you don't get confused about how come a lying spirit came from the Lord. So so um, so now the reason why I was reading that because I want you to understand that there, there, is, there are spirits of darkness. There are lying spirits and spirits of darkness that go to work when they look at a people, when they look at a person and they realize their desires are not right and their desires are evil. All right. Now, when they realize that your desire is evil and remember when I say evil I'm not just basically talking about anything that is dark. Evil is anything that is against God's will. So it could look righteous but because it is not God's will it is evil. Are you understanding? So for example if you want to get married and you have put your eyes on a specific man if you're a woman and that man is not the will of the Lord what the lying spirit now will do because already you have a desire that is against God's will. That is where a lying spirit now sees a door and comes and lies to you because already that is what you want. Are you getting it? So this is the same scenario now. So if you look at the time we are living in, there is a lot of people in our time in terms of Christianity whose desire is just to enjoy life, to live well, to do well, which is not necessarily evil, but that is all they want. And so when you look at their motive, all right, their motive is not to preach Christ. Their motive is to get the best of cars. Their motive, it is not to go for the next soul. Their motive is to have the best of life here on earth. They will even tell you, forget about heaven. We are still here. 
If they see you so sold out to the things of God, they're like, what is your problem? Just loosen up. So that kind of a motive, that is where a line spirit comes in because already you want the things of this world. When the line spirit sees that kind of a motive in the body of Christ, a line spirit goes to the mouth of the prophet and all they do is give you what you want. All they do is prophesy to you the things you want to hear. You want to hear you're going to drive tomorrow? Fine. Because of the motive that you carry, the lying spirit will come and enter in a generation. So all they are going to preach to you, it is not about how you can grow in Christianity. It is not about how you can grow in your abilities. They will not tell you how you can heal the sick. They will, they will not teach you those things. No. They will give you what you want because already you are more Motives are wrong. So motives are very powerful in the manner that the motive that you have will guide you to a false prophet or allow you to open up yourself to be spoken to by a false prophet. But when your motive is for God, when your motive is clean, when your motive is for the will of God and the burdens of God, you are going to be drawn to the Holy Spirit. Are you getting so the other thing that can cause you to enter into false prophecy is your motives. What are your motives? So if you look at the generation we are living in, you will tell there, are, there is a lot of motives that are just worldly, earthly, you know. And it's not that people who have got the burdens of the Lord don't have good things. No, we have good things. It is just that we don't capitalize on that. We know that we are supposed to, you know, to just seek the Lord, you know, to seek the kingdom. We seek the kingdom first and its righteousness and the things will be added. We know the progression of the things of the spirit. But then when you are a person whose motive is the things of the world, a lying spirit will enter you and enter your prophet. So you come into a prayer meeting like this, you may not survive. The reason why you will not survive because what is in you, it is not being fed here. Here you will come, nobody might even prophesy to you. And even if they do prophesy to you, Joyce will tell you, go and fast. And you wanted to hear, you are going to drive by June. That is why we are living in a time where you must be very, very alert. Know your spiritual tribe. Are you understanding? Right. So now, um, there, there is a lot of people who have entered into error deeper and deeper and deeper because they are not editing their motives. You must check in these end times, you must check your heart. What are you in the kingdom for? When you go to prayer, what comes out? For a whole one hour, do you pray about your own desires? Is it wrong to pray for yourself? No, it is not. Actually, the Bible says you ask and you're going to receive. So even the desires that you have, God can still give you those desires. But you see, when you don't have God's will featuring in your prayer, in your life, in the things that drive you, I can assure you, even if you look at the kind of churches you choose, you tell yourself what is in you. Now we are getting to the serious things. Even when you go online, the preachers you like listening to, I was talking to somebody, I think like a year ago, and I mentioned a specific preacher. And she was like, I cannot sleep without listening to her. And when I look at this preacher, I cannot even manage to listen to her for two minutes. You know, they're just preachers, not that it's wrong, it, it's just not for you. You see people lifting their chairs and shouting hallelujah because the, the message is entering. But here you're wondering, so what is my problem? I cannot even make it to listen for two minutes. And this one is telling me that she cannot sleep without listening to her. That's when I realized we are in two different worlds. All right? Because when you have a lying spirit, you will choose your prophets. Because what is in you will identify what I want to hear. So edit who do you listen to. If you realize that you are, you are more inclined to a preacher who will never rebuke you, a preacher 
Who will never tell you about the cross? If you hear about sin, you don't want to go back there. False prophet is growing in you, small, small, but is there. If you cannot stand a preacher who is so hard, you see what Ahab said. He said, when they said they want to consult, when Jehoshaphat said they consult another prophet, Ahab said, leave that one alone. He never tells me anything good. So Ahab always liked hearing good things. From who? From these prophets. That is where the lying spirit came. So when you have a lying spirit, you yourself, you will choose your own prophet. Even when you find you watching television, you're just going to be switching from this channel. There you are told you're going to give 100 shillings, you're going to get 500 by tomorrow 1 p.m. And you believe that nonsense. And you switch to the other one. And they tell you something else. And you're so excited. And it's like you don't learn because tomorrow you're going to be to another one who is going to tell you another thing. And, and your life has been like that. And you don't find a problem. Witchcraft is at work. Because you are choosing your prophet. Alright. Now, the other thing that I want us to understand now concerning false prophecy is that when you have this false prophecy and you're a disciple now, you're not a leader, you're a disciple, is that you are going to not have such a because when you're a disciple of a false prophet, they will never grow you to get stature. You will always be grown to become very dependent, spiritually dependent. So you don't have stature. So when a disciple of a false prophet enters a prayer meeting like this, okay, day one and day two, they can sleep because, you know, we all have busy time. So sometimes we are very busy during the day. We come here, we are tired, we sleep. That's why you've never seen us. Have you ever seen us waking up anybody? If somebody is sleeping, have we ever woken you because you're sleeping? No, we don't. Because sometimes people are very tired. They just want to be in God's presence and we don't have a problem with that. But that's a different scenario, all right? That you had a very busy day. You came and you just slept. That's okay. Sleep in God's presence. Don't worry. But if the sleeping is a demonic thing, that you enter into a prayer meeting like this and you cannot survive. Like the environment just takes you, not even here, even at home when you decide to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, some demonic blanket comes on you and you sleep. Meaning you have got no stature for prayer. You try to read the word of God. You read two lines, you sleep or you get distracted. You have got no stature for the word. Like when you are raised by a false prophet, one of the things you are not going to have is spiritual stature. If a sick person came to you, you have got no understanding of how do I lay hands. Because you are trained to call your pastor or your prophet to get the prophet. <laughs> if the prophet is healing, you must call. At midnight, the child is sick, call. Because you have got no stature. But when you are under somebody who is a true servant of God, they will grow you in stature. They will allow you to grow. They will see the gift of healing and allow you to pray for the sick. Are you understanding? Look at the Bible. It was not the priest that would go to pray for the sick. Actually, it was the elders who would go to pray for the sick, anointing them with oil. Timothy would be sitting comfortably doing other ministry business, but the elders were supposed to go pray and lay hands on the sick, meaning their work was divided among them. But then when you are under a false prophet, they are alpha and they do everything. They do everything to a level where I don't know now whether I should say the, this or <laughs> the way they see a shout. They will do everything to a level where if there is another arising minister around this prophet, 
everybody in the congregation they will know this other one arising their grace is less are you getting me like they will they will have created a system that makes anybody else arising look less in terms of anointing so even when for example people need to be prayed for if you tell somebody go get prayed by a pastor so and so you can tell that person is not happy because they feel I must get prayer from the senior prophet okay something is wrong and it can begin like that because sometimes sons are raised and they grow but there has to come a time when sons become so powerful that the senior prophet can sit aside and just enjoy how God is using their sons. Are you getting me? There has to be that time. So yes, a ministry cannot be five years, ten years. And for all that time, there is nobody else that can stand on the altar and the people forget the senior prophet. There is an error. If you are really raising sons and raising daughters in the ministry, they should overdo you you can be having wisdom because you have had a lot of experience but anointing wise I assure you you can go very very far are you getting it look at Paul he didn't even come when Christ was on the earth he met him after Christ has gone are you understanding but look at the work Paul did Look at the books he wrote. Look at the things he came with. Like this New Testament, a whole chunk of it is written by him. Are you getting? So you understand how things go. All right? So that is a progression. But if you see somebody whose produce are always smaller, like even when that man of God is not in church that day, that you all feel something is missing. It is okay if it's a new thing, a new church, it is okay because maybe they are still in the process of raising. But my friend, you've been there for five years, ten years, and there is nobody who can enter in the shoes of that man or woman, there is a problem. There is a problem. Because you have to reproduce your kind. If you're that powerful, you have to reproduce very, very powerful people. So they do not produce structure, uh, uh, structure. And their disciples are always very, very intimidated. Intimidated disciples. You, you, you stand on the altar. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to say it. In fact, let me tell you something. <laughs> when you're a disciple of a false prophet, and you stand on the altar or you're saying something even in a home fellowship you are going to be inclined to praise your leader especially if they are around like there is just an atmosphere that tells you this thing eh? you just have to kind of boost them with what you're saying something is wrong is it wrong to say something good about a leader it is not wrong we appreciate leaders right but then it comes in a way that you can tell there is a false spirit operating here because when everybody wanna say something even when it has nothing to do with papa and mama like seriously you know this whole thing has nothing to do with papa and mama this whole thing has to do with sister so-and-so who decided to go and, and, and visit so-and-so and God healed in that hospital. The healing that God did through sister so-and-so, why is Papa and Mama coming into this healing? I say it as I preach, edit yourself. It's a very big problem. So you, there is something that pushes you to praise them. Nobody tells you, but for a reason, if you don't do it, it is actually a problem. Okay? The other thing that I want to talk about, that is very serious. When it comes to false prophets teaching warfare, 
Remember, we do warfare, right? When it comes to false prophets teaching warfare, or when it is a false prophet doing warfare, which can be me and you doing warfare, the heart issues that are going to spill out of it, you will hear them in the prayer point. So, if you are praying against witchcraft, because in your mind already you know it is your cousin that is bewitching you. You, you never saw the charms. You just know it is your cousin. So when we are scattering the witch, you, you are not even seeing the spirit. You are just seeing the cousin. And even if I said you, you scatter by fire, you are saying die by fire. The prayer point was scatter by but in you, you're feeling, no, scattered by fire is not enough. They have to die by fire. So what is happening there, the heart issues of hatred are spilling out. They are spilling out. And that is something that is so common. I wish I would be able to say this to a lot of believers. And as I teach this, I will show you something that the Lord has taught me. You can consider it or you can consider to do it or not. And the Lord have taught me that there are things that are lawful. In other words, they are acceptable biblically. You can do them. But then when you mature, you know how to deal with them. I'll give you an example. Biblically, it is lawful to kill witches, right? biblically right so if we give you a prayer point here every witch every sorcerer scattered by fire lawfully scripturally we are right okay and I know there is another kind of belief where people say people cannot do that but their notion is that we, we can forgive which is, is okay but that is a weaker way of believing I will show you the point that the Lord taught me the Lord showed me that then if you're so powerful, you believe you can kill that witch. Why don't you use that power to bring them salvation? If you're so powerful that you believe that die by fire, you're praying for your mother to die by fire because some prophet told you your mother is bewitching you. If you believe you're so powerful to kill them, why can't you use that power to bring them salvation? And the Lord continued to show me that even witches, they behave better. When you have stolen something and the witch need to punish you, they actually don't punish, they don't kill you. You know what they do? They will make you eat grass. See, they will send you bees. They talk to me. When you have done something and witches want to teach you a lesson, they will not die you by fire. They must teach you their power. So they even though at the end of the day, the enemy comes to see you kill and destroy, they will not go fast. They will be very slow so that you understand that there is power in witchcraft. Because witchcraft is all about power. Witches, they want to demonstrate power. Diviners demonstrate knowledge. Alright? So, the Lord showed me, when you have done something and witchcraft need to teach you a lesson, they don't kill you. You will eat grass. They will send you bees. They, they, they will, you will agree witchcraft is there and you possibly might go now to look for a bigger witch or a more powerful witch to be able to you know now that game eh? and the Lord took me to a scripture I want to teach you but now don't forget what I began saying I began saying there are things that are lawful but when you mature in the Lord you begin to learn some things so I'm not saying that you cannot scatter witches and kill them in fact if you're ignorant they will kill you are you getting me that is why you hear something like, you kill them before they kill you. Because if you're ignorant, they will kill you. So you, what I'm saying is for the mature. But then if you are a baby, that means even your power to kill by fire cannot even work. So sometimes it's just hate spilling out of us. Hmm. How many have you killed and they were buried? Okay, so the Lord took me to the scripture. Um, I 
There's a lot of verses. Let me just quote because it's a lot of it's a very familiar scripture. You know when when Paul um, and and Barnabas they went to preach and they encountered Bar Jesus. You remember that story of the Bar Jesus? Okay. When they encountered him, the scripture is very clear that he was a witch. But then what happened is that Paul said to him that you are going to become blind now for several days. Hey. So what did Paul do when he met a witch? He made him blind for several Okay. So what are we seeing here? We are seeing an apostle showing us it is possible for us to demonstrate the power we carry and which us will be able to see surely this god who can make me blind for 3 days i think i don't mind this kind of a god because which is all they are looking for is for the next power in fact if a witch realizes that your god is more powerful you know they will want that god remember like simeon was telling philip you know like sell me what you have because he realized that this one is they are all about power so they don't care what source the power is coming from as long as it's a more powerful power so this witch was made blind by paul for several days that is by jesus i know now you're getting to a place where you're wondering what is she teaching us today what i'm teaching you is that the things that are lawful but when you mature you begin now to edit yourself so am i saying killing witches it is wrong no it is not it's scriptural you can do that you have the freedom even here we can give you a, that prayer point but now at the end of the day ask yourself are you praying that dealing with the person or are you doing that dealing with the spirit because most of the time when you are praying against witches when you are praying against that kind of a, a, a you know of an attack most of the time already what you are calling a witch is that coworker in the office and you know for sure you know you know for sure whoever when we give a prayer point here about a witch your mind goes straight to the office to your coworker that one is a witch and so when you are saying you die by fire you you are like even when you see them they didn't come to work because was see you are like yes you are waiting for them to die <laughs> <laughs> am I right or am I right? Yeah. You will be so surprised how evil people are in the church. If somebody does something very small to you, they qualify to the ranking of witches according to you. And so if anything bad happens to them, you are actually happy and you believe that it is now you your prayer that scatter by fire it is what is being answered do you know how that is how evil we have become in fact if all our prayer points were to be answered i don't even know who would survive i don't know because at the end of the day that woman in the plot the one that you had a quarrel with that was the one that you were scattering by fire so if they were really to scatter I don't know what joy you would feel if kids were left orphans. I don't know. That is how false prophecy have trained disciples to become. So we get to pray in warfare which is very important. Please never live a life where you don't do warfare. Pray. But listen to your motives. Listen to your motives. that prayer point that you're praying is it coming out of love or is it coming out of hatred when people have this spirit of false prophecy they have so much hatred and the only way to release it because you not take a knife and go stabbing people or a gun you do that in prayer so if you listen to what people are praying or the conversation you can just hear the heart issues spilling out dark hearts very dark hearts so most of us we need to edit ourselves in that area 
If you want to remain in the place of killing witches, scriptural. But if I were you, I would first of all ask the Lord to help me to grow, to express his power. And when I'm able to express his power, I'll be able now to use that power to reach those who are evil. Because if Paul he didn't kill El, uh, you know, Elimas, he was Elimas or Baal, Jesus is the same person. What happened is that he became blind. And it means that if we are, we are powerful, we can change the world. Um, somebody told me, I'm not sure that it is true, but somebody told me uh, like in Adi River town, that people there don't even know the way when you lock your shop, you lock everything inside. I heard in Adi River, you don't have to lock your stuff. Because the level of witchcraft should advise you that if the milkman is supplying milk in the morning, they will just leave the milk at your door and nobody will touch it. Because the level of witchcraft by itself, it should advise people, you don't touch my milk. That is a power of a kind, right? So the witchcraft in the area is so powerful that even the locals know you don't touch anybody's nothing. Even if they went to go buy more stock and they left mandazi hanging, no child can touch that mandazi. Okay, because mandazi may just begin talking when it is in the stomach. Saying, you stole me, you stole me, remove me, you take me back and it is in your stomach. So do you see how witches walk in their own power? Do you see that even the people out there know witchcraft is power? Why can't we then upgrade to walk in power to a level people will be like, that one is a believer, please don't touch them. So what comes out most of the time in our prayer points, it is actually nothing to do with power, has to do with a very dark heart. A lot of hatred is what comes out. You know when you have power, you don't even talk. Do you talk? No, you don't talk. Somebody who has power, if they will say anything, they will just tell you, Utanio, Utaniona. I tell you that Utaniona can affect you for 10 years. Because the truth is Utaona. And they give you time to honor. All right? They don't kill you. No, 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 no. You have to, they will make you see. I hope I have done my best to elaborate that. That is for a level of maturity. That is for you to edit your heart. What is going on in your heart? Now, when you're also dealing with, um, for example, witchcraft, there are different types of witches. There are witches who, if they're, they're in an area and they realize that you are prayerful. One of the things they would do, because your prayer will make them not operate. So sometimes you can be fighting a witch who you are not even related, they don't even know you. But because you are in the area where they are, they will interfere with you. They will fight you, you can find sickness, things can happen to you. So when you're dealing with that kind of a witch, number one, remember, you don't even know them, all right? So they're, they're just affecting you because you are in their locality. All right? So when you're dealing with that kind of, of witchcraft, you have to be very, very also high in the Lord. Because if you're praying in an area and there is a powerful altar of darkness, and it can creep on you. That's why you see people who can rise and they don't go far. Why? Because there was an, there was an altar of witchcraft in the area. And when the witch realized that you are, like, I, I think there is a time my husband gave a testimony here and said, where we live, one of the ladies had actually told somebody she's in charge of that whole area. Like that whole Kitengela area. She even would say from this corner to this corner, it belongs to her. She's a witch. And then our house and her house is, was like this. She sold her house for over 20 million and moved. Because that is what should happen to witches. Because what happens, they realize they are wasting time. Because as long as they are around you, they are not able to operate. So they will leave. Remember, I also gave you a testimony. Sometime when I went back to my village to minister in a place in a church, 
And then there was the first prophet who all the people would go to consult. And I stood on that altar of the church and I said, that which must move, the false prophet must move. And he went, he's never been back again. So that is how you conquer battles of witchcraft that are territorial. You become so powerful that they will move away. All right? So that is different from, from what we fight at a personal level. What we fight at a personal level most of the time is people we know, is people we are related to, people we've been told, people we have suspected. That is why I'm saying check your heart. Are you getting it? Check your heart. So now, in the case of those ones who are in the territory, who you don't know and who possibly the Lord have showed you the danger the people in the area are, if you're dealing with those ones, you scatter by fire or command them to expire because you may not know them. And maybe you have seen the danger. There are some witches, if they don't expire, if they don't die, the preachers there in that area cannot become immoral. Some of those, you bind, you scatter, you uh, command them to expire. Maybe when they're on their deathbed, they can receive Christ. Or you paralyze them. Are you getting them? You paralyze the operation. So I'm not in any way possible telling you do not wage war. Seriously, do, do it. Because they don't come to play. They don't come to play. They will finish you if you don't finish them. So please don't miss under, under, uh, don't underestimate the power that they have. But we are more powerful, we have more power. I want to read a scripture. First John 4.1. 1 John 4.1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So here, the book of 1 John 4.1, we are seeing that we should test every spirit. You know, so we should try the spirits whether they are of God. It means there are different spirits that are not of God. And many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, these were the days when they, they, you know, when they were writing the Bible. Then they were saying there are many false prophets. Now, imagine now. Imagine now. So we should be people who are able to learn how to discern them, how to test the spirit. All right? Now, Another characteristic that I want to talk about shortly is that a false prophet will cause you to be separated with people. Your circle becomes smaller. Let me just say this. If you need money and you go to your phone book, and you scroll a whole phone book and you cannot find anybody who can give you the money you need. Your problem could have started spiritually. And that is the case of many believers. Am I right? Many believers don't have helpers. The reason many believers don't have helpers is because when you are under false prophecy, it, that, that spirit disperses your help. And your help will only remain with the prophet or on a specific altar. Are you getting? Because that spirit doesn't want you to know that God uses people. So it disconnects you from people. But don't forget, God uses people. So when you are under false prophet, you will not have reliable friends. Even when you have friends, they are just a by-the-way friend. And I remember... I've given this example before. Look at the people in the world. Just see them gather for a baby shower. Have you seen those things? They will gather for a baby shower, a half million will be collected. People in the church, even when somebody has died, even to buy the coffin, it is a big deal. So what spirit is really working here? What is this we are teaching people that people are not relating? What is this we are teaching people that people cannot even stand with each other? Look at the people of the world when they are doing bad days. Look at them. When you are just sending messages online, 
All you do is send to people messages online, happy birthday. And we look at your post that it has got 500 likes. And we think it is a blessing. People in the world have no time for that. They will show up in that house with alcohol, with good money, with meat, they will celebrate. Believers, they have no time for that. And they don't find like that is necessary. There is a problem. Because the spirit of false prophecy separates you from your helpers. Are we not supposed to be the people who are very connected? Are we not supposed to be the people who know how to help each other? Are we not supposed to be the people who have enough friends because we are genuine people? But how come we are the people who don't have helpers? We are the people who you can actually look for 1,000 and every sister you call, they're like, imagine I don't have. I wish you called me like two hours ago. I could have helped you, but right now, I don't have. Is that not common? It is common. Now the thing I want you to know is that these people, and this, if this is you, please edit. Don't think about that person who is not here. I don't know them. It is you that need to deal with this. People who are false prophets, they, they, in their leadership, even if they're at home, they are very authoritative. So their style of leadership is autocratic. An autocratic leader is a leader who is very authoritative. Very authoritative. It is their way or no way. It is their way or highway. There is no in between. So even when they choose leadership, they will control the leadership. Have you ever seen a scenario like that? In a company also, you can find a boss who is auto very, very authoritative. They are a CEO, they have a board, but the board is just there to say yes, sir. So at the end of the day, the board is just there because they should be there. Because it may be part of the constitution of the company. But the board can never alter anything. I've seen those things in companies. I've seen those things in churches where there's a leadership, but the leadership is all yes, sir. That is false prophecy at work. One of the reasons I admire churches that have different kind of leadership like the PCA it is because they remove a lot of responsibilities from the set man who is supposed to pray for people and anoint people and preach to people that is the reverence and they put the leadership on the elders and those elders they can meet from morning to evening debating a matter they will even go to a level of voting but the truth is that matter is not decided by one person. And if they disagree, they will come next time and continue with the matter. That is a very healthy church. And there is other churches. We are trusting God as we grow as watchers have. We are going to be able to have enough people like leadership coming around who now belong to watchers have. That we are able to build that kind of a leadership. And the other churches also that I don't want to mention that have that kind of a leadership. And if you look at the churches that have that kind of a leadership, you will notice that they have developed. They have developed so much because in terms of finances, finances are handled differently. Let me ask you a very simple question. How come a church like a Presbyterian, when you munasemaga hawana roho, but you go there, you find that even their evangelist is under salary. You, your evangelist, how much are they getting paid? I'm just asking a question. Do you even have one? Do you even have somebody set? I don't want to say in your church because I don't want to get personal now. But <laughs> do you have somebody set aside and you know this is evangelist?
So you see, when false prophecy enters in the body of Christ, even the types of leadership we adapt, they are kind of leadership that are very authoritative. It is just one set man who will have people under him or her, but these people will just need to do things the way they should be done, the way they want them done, not the way it's healthy for it to be done. I'm not saying one man cannot have good leadership. It is possible for one man to be, you know, the head, and it's possible for them to have very good administration. This is a very big possibility. But we have seen in many cases that doesn't work very well. That is why even today, if you ask me how much money it is in the Watchers Hub account, I have no idea. I will have to ask Joy to check because I don't know. I'm even better. My husband cannot even tell you. He, he have no time for that. Because we taught ourselves long time. Now can you imagine me running here with a basket to know to count offering? One thing that I don't like doing is counting church money. Many years, most of the jobs that I ever worked when I worked in Kenya, I worked in Kenya very shortly, but then all the other jobs I worked outside. Most of those companies, I used to count money, and it was a lot of money. So I did enough counting of money. I counted money until by the time I'm done, I have flu. Have you ever counted money and you're having flu because of all the dust? Eh? So I got done with that. So I don't like counting money. If you want to chase me from a church, put me in a department of, because I don't like it. I will not have time to try to open 50 bobs and 100 and 200 and, and straighten them. And some of them need sell out but I have no time for that. But most of you know, because when we talk about church so much then you, you just you know very well the relationship you have with money that if you put your 200 shillings somewhere in the house and you tend to forget where you put it you will quarrel everybody in that house that is wickedness brewing have you ever had brewing wickedness it is only 200 shillings. If you become a pastor, <laughs> the reason we come here for like two to three hours had to pay prayer points. These are the things when you come here, Lord, help me. You know, excavate what is in me. Excavate every field. Excavate things I have adapted from people that I thought these things were right and they were not right. Help me. Help my thinking system. You know, you can be so much under false prophecy that even your friends. I remember one time I went to a lunch hour meeting. You know, at least here we have not begun to post any pictures on social media. Nikaenda kazi ile kanisa wanaongea wanaongojaga uingie kwa wao na unajulikana. Camera man akanipa ikapostiwa. Si umeenda lunch wa saa 7. Saa 8 ilikuwa online. Niliulizwa, what are you doing with these poor pastors churches? And it was near our office. So niko and it's not I mean do I care about poor or rich? I just want to hear the word of God. So even your friends will be dictated. Where you go will be dictated. You cannot even travel. You cannot go for holiday to Dubai before you are anointed. Now I led you on a pan and dege wanarudi. So you you find you have got your own like you you live under a lot of fear by the help of the spirit. Now that you have heard that, I know that wherever you go. You know, even when you guys to do mission work, like we, we were in a mission work uh, last week, we actually got 41 souls, we never gave you that report. Last Sunday we got another 41 souls. So even when you go to preach in those schools, eh? even when you go to preach, now where yourself? What are you feeling? What are you feeling? Lord, I felt bad. Because this guy preached and they really shined. 
Me, the last time I preached, there was no move. But when he preached, God moved. That is, because you should believe as long as you have preached, the word has been planted. Whether people fell or people got born again or not, the word was enough and the work was done. So you, that is how you begin to wear yourself. You begin to see. You begin to see. Kama unakaga mahali unashinu sasa hapa hivi kwa nini zipati nafasi ya kuhubiri Those are the things you should be looking at All right yeah, so the holy spirit will help us You know Christ is coming for a clean church a clean bride So saizi kutanza cleansing 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 When we began the year just before just before the year ended last year i always listen to the lord for the word of the year and i had a very strange word i'm not sure that any of you logged into that online meeting that i had i think it was a zoom but i posted it online and the word was it is our ear of the shoe bread shoe bread now remember our background is deliverance church and the bishop had given a word of redigging and repossessing which are very powerful word but now for watchers hub we had i had it is the ear of shoe bread shoe bread is a bread that was always on the ark of the covenant and so the lord was saying to us it is the ear where we are going to eat him like we are going to we are going to really understand him in the word jomoro unakuja hapa unasikia vitu zinakufungu like remember the other Friday we came here we learned about the blood of Jesus. You remember that? So you could tell there is something the Lord is doing by his word. So so now when you hear that, when you move from here you go, you get your own opportunities to preach or to do whatever. You'll be surprised that the Lord will use you even extraordinarily. Now next time I want to enter into the prophetic now that is by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to talk about the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, tongues, interpretation and the other ways now that the Holy Ghost speaks to us you know in terms of um when we are prophets i'm going to talk about encounters i'm going to talk about uh, the prophetic actions so all those things now are the things that the holy spirit your conscience because they can also be used the circumstances songs because sometimes the spirit of god will use songs you understand yeah so i didn't want to get into that before to deal how my jama all right can we all be upstanding let's all be upstanding uh, let's give our offerings very very quick so uh, you can get an envelope and give electronically our till number is there and God will bless you if you're giving cash you, you're going to bring in front when you're ready we're just going to bless it very shortly if you are ready with your offerings we are going to speak a blessing Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the giving we are doing. Bless you for provision. Bless you because your work will not stop. For the fact that, Lord, you have allowed us to be able to have the substances to preach the gospel with. And therefore, Father, even as we leave these sacrifices, offerings, and tithes to you, we pray the Lord they be acceptable. And we pray the Lord God, you are going to glorify yourself. Then as we get back, 34, 64, and 104 in accordance to our faith. Father, we are very, very sure there are blessings and doors that open by the virtue of our sacrifice. And therefore, Lord God, we pray that we are going to see these doors opening. We are going to see elevations. We are going to see good reports. We are going to see favor. We are going to see supernatural occurrences to our favor because we gave because we have given there shall not be poor in our lives in our families because we have obeyed your word we thank you because men will give to our bosom in the name of jesus christ we pray amen you can